gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, lately, I've got a bunch of great questions in my YouTube comments, on LinkedIn, on Reddit. Uh, I do genuinely try to answer as many as I can. Um, occasionally, someone asks a question that I think a ton of techs might have, but are too afraid to ask or have never gotten a satisfactory answer for. Um, today, for Q&A number one, I want to answer the question, uh, why do we short the windings for the power factor test, but not for Megger? Or more specifically, why do we need to short the windings for power factor, but we don't need to for Megger? Let's quickly define those two tests right off the bat. Uh, obviously, there's a very long list of tests we need to perform for the acceptance testing or the, the maintenance testing of large oil field transformers. Uh, the two we're talking about today seem really similar at first, but there are a few key differences. Um, the MEGR or insulation resistance test, it's a test where we apply between one and 10 kV and measure the current leaking from the winding under test to ground or to the other winding. The power factor test is where we apply between one and 10 kV and measure the current leaking to ground or to the other winding. Those sound exactly the same. It's a con by NIDA for testing companies to sell more tests. Well, no. Also, yes. Uh, the information we get from those results tell us two completely different things. Megger being a DC test, uh, the results are recorded in large resistance units like megohms or gigohms and tell us the strength of the liquid and solid insulation between two points at a given applied voltage. You can use a comparison of the mega results at different times to further analyze the quality of the insulation, though this is really more useful in, in general for looking at the solid insulation of a dry type transformer or a motor or something like that. Power factor is an AC test and the results we get are significantly more precise. We test the same stuff generally at the insulation uh, since we're energizing the windings and measuring a leakage current across the insulator. But the results we get can be more useful at diagnosing specific issues since the results are recorded in, in more ways, uh, such as power loss in watts, capacitance in farads, and the overall power factor in you know, percent power factor. I'm not going to get into the analysis of those results today. Uh, that's a much longer video for someone smarter than I am. The objective today is to get an intuitive answer to the question, why do we need to short the windings for power factor? But we don't for Megger. In short, pun intended, Megger uses DC and power factor uses AC. Now, why is that important? Because math. Uh, we're going to look at a couple of formulas and I'm not asking you to memorize the equations. Just remember the concept. Okay, so we've got sort of an example of a sort of generic delta Y three phase transformer. Um, so you get the H1, H2, H3 here on the left side, the core in the middle, um, and then X1, X2, X3, and XO on the right side. And for the example that we're going to talk about, uh, it's going to make a little bit more sense if we just simplify it down to a regular single phase transformer and just, you know, assume that all of the math we're doing is going to extrapolate out. Um, so here's our example transformer. Uh, simplify down H1, H2 with very little else than an inductor in between the two. X1, X2 with an inductor in the middle. And then obviously uh, a pretty good insulator around. So these are sort of floating in space. If I want to check the resistance from H to X, from H to X, well, what's in our way? Presumably a pretty good insulator. If it's, uh, it's a dry type transformer, it's going to be solid insulating resin. If it's a oil field transformer, it's going to be oil and then the paper wrapped around the windings. Um, but I want to make sure that this whole H side is energized at the same voltage. So I've got my high voltage DC from my test set being connected to H1 or H2 or H3 or wherever. It doesn't necessarily matter. But I need to make sure that this entire winding is energized the same so that I can measure all of the voltage, or sorry, all of the current leaking from this winding to this without anything else in between that's not just the insulator, right? So how can we be sure that the voltage on H1 is going to be the same at H2? Well, there's a, and well, we've got that length of winding in the middle. 
But I'm, I'm telling you now I can ignore that, and I aim to prove that. Our impedance formula is going to look like z equals the square root of r squared plus uh, x squared. So this is our total impedance. This is our resistance. Pardon my chicken scratch. And then this is our reactance, or our reactive impedance. Again, that's the formula for impedance. Um, so the resistance across this winding, across this guy here, is going to be fairly low. It's going to be in the, you know, milli to micro ohms. It's going to be a very, very small resistance. And we're not pushing a whole lot of current out of our, uh, out of our mega, right? It's a, it's fairly low current application. When we apply voltage, it saturates really quickly and we're not pushing a lot of current through here. So this resistance, I'm going to say we can more or less ignore. So what we're left with is Z equals, we can simplify this, we can simplify this, down to Z equals X. Well, what is X equal in this case? Well, it's our reactive impedance. Now, the formula to find uh, reactive impedance in a circuit like this is going to be X total, right? Now, our reactive impedance equals the uh, absolute value of X of C minus X of L. Well, I can tell you <laughs> just intuitively, there's not really any capacitance between this point and this point, right? There's not a capacitor in there. It's effectively just a big, long, spun together wire. So again, we can simplify, take that part out, and we can say X total equals R X of L. Well, <laughs> Let's go down again. What is X of L equal? Our X of L is equal to this kind of goofy formula. Again, you don't have to remember the whole formula. Just I want you to get the concept. X of L in this case is 2 times pi times F, which is the frequency, uh, times L. So 2 pi is like what? Roughly 6 something, 7 something. Uh, F is our frequency. This is a DC test, so our frequency is going to be zero times L. I don't, in this case, care what the impedance of my inductor is because I already have a zero term in here, so X of L equals zero. So I can say that the impedance when I apply DC here is roughly zero, effectively zero for this test. So when I apply high voltage DC here, this whole thing will light up and all be at the same voltage, which is cool, very convenient, makes a mega test a very, very quick and easy thing to do on a transformer, great. We don't generally need to short the windings for mega because we're lighting up the whole winding when we use uh, DC, when we energize using DC as if it's a straight single wire. At a high voltage with low current, DC, uh, we ignore the impedance phase to phase, uh, as long as they're you know internally connected, as long as the phases are internally connected, as in, they are in most transformers. Uh, since the current flow through a given winding during the test is quite low, we assume that the entire winding is at the same potential, the same voltage the whole time. Performing the power factor test uh, we use AC, so that impedance we previously ignored from H1 to H2 and so on, that's actually going to get in our way now. That should make intuitive sense, right? Uh, when we apply AC voltage to a transformer winding during normal service or under load, it doesn't act like a dead short, right? It doesn't act like a fault. It doesn't blow the transformer up every time we do that. Otherwise, <laughs> why would we have transformers? The inductive impedance... Uh, between phases on a winding regulates the current flow. That formula is X of L equals 2 pi F times L. So previously we had simplified this down to X of L equals 0, right? But that's for DC because this is 0. And again, I don't necessarily need to know what this L term is in Henry's, inductive inductance in Henry's. You're not going to find the inductance of a 
uh, transformer winding on the nameplate data. But what we are going to know is that this is now a pretty big number because this is what? 7 times 60 times L. This is a very real number now. And so to get around that, because, because what we're trying to accomplish now is I need to test the, the, the power loss, the current flowing, and the capacitance between this whole winding and this whole winding. I need to see how much current flows through here and essentially the, the, the phase angle shift between the voltage I apply here and the current flowing across. That's what we're trying to test when we do the power factor test. So how do I do that if there's a lag that the voltage that winds up here is different than the voltage that winds up here as if there's a resistance between that? I don't necessarily want that. I again want all of the voltage that I apply here to end up here at the same time without my red lead being connected to H2. I only have one red lead, one hot lead on my power factor test set. Well, we do that very simply. I'm just going to put my, my jumper, my short, in green here, and we're going to do the same thing over here. And so this is an external short, an external jumper, that I apply when I do my high voltage test with the power factor test set. So when I apply, when I apply my high voltage AC lead to H1 and I jumper them all together, I'm giving multiple current paths for that potential to flow into the winding. And so no current has to flow across the winding and be slowed down by that impedance, be, be impeded by that reactive impedance. So this whole winding is now going to be at the same potential. And this whole winding is also going to be at the same potential. So then I can effectively test the capacitance, the power factor, and the watt loss between the two, or between this whole winding and ground, or whatever we're trying to test, right? So this essentially allows us to penetrate into the winding with less impedance, because it's got the same voltage going in it. There's no impedance across that winding because there shouldn't be any current flow across the winding. Therefore, we have done the same thing, essentially the same thing as we do with the mega test, where the entire winding is at the same potential the whole time. So we connect H1 and H2 together, as well as X1 and X2, or all available bushings for that winding. Shorting the windings externally allows current from the test set to flow all the way into the winding from both ends, and we can effectively ignore the impedance between H1 and H2, which makes our reading uh, between the red lead energizing the entire H side and the return on the X side much, much more accurate. The voltage at any given instant is the same between H1 and H2, so as we energize that H winding with respect to ground, there's very little current flow through the winding to be impeded by. Thus, we can ignore the impedance and treat the whole H winding as if it's a straight wire in space. Same for the X winding. And again, since we're using AC, we're trying to measure the capacitance between an inductive winding and something else. We don't want the inductance of the winding to slow down or have any effect on our test current. We don't want the voltage difference between H1 and H2. We only want to measure the difference between the entire H winding and the entire X winding. I hope that visualization helps. Um, I think a lot of the time techs are given sort of the, the minimum training or just taught how to push the buttons. Understanding some of these more intricate concepts or having it explained in a, in a different way just can make you all better techs. You know, a more thorough understanding of what you're doing and why we're doing it is always a good thing. So if you've got a question that you'd like to see answered on the next Q&A, please let me know down in the comments, shoot me a message. Um, yeah, and I'll add it to the list. Stay safe and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.